And hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cyrus Webb Presents here on Amazon Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. I want to welcome those tuning in on Amazon. Miss Queenie, we see you there. Thank you so much for being with us. ESP Presents, we see you over there on Amazon as well. Glad to have you. Duke J, hello to you. Duke says, congratulations to you, Dr. Aww. Valma. Uh, <laughs> and uh, definitely appreciate you guys coming in. Appreciate the hearts as well. See those coming in. You all are watching Cyrus Web Presents here on Amazon Live. If you all are new to us, make sure you guys do hit that follow button. You'll see it here in this corner or down below. You will also see the books from our next guest, which is actually a returning guest. Uh, Jacqueline, hello to you. I appreciate you being on with us, Jacqueline and family. We're excited to welcome back Dr. Velma Bagby to our broadcast today. You guys know her as the author of many books, including the Catch series. Of course, she began the series with the Catch No One Wants. You all can see it there. Then she went from there earlier this year that gave us one of our top books of 2023, The Wrong Catch. And now she is ending the year with another great book I have here on my Kindle, The Wrong Catch, She'll Tear Down the House. You guys can see it there on my Kindle. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the new book for you guys on the Amazon storefront so you guys can be able to see it there. Dr. Velma, congratulations to you on the new book. Thank you, Cyrus. I appreciate you for joining me on this journey, and I'm so glad to return to your show. Well, glad to have you. Teresa Smith, hello to you, Dr. Todd. She's joining us on Facebook. She says hello to you. And Carolyn Coleman is also joining us on LinkedIn. So we're simulcasting this broadcast. We are on Amazon primarily, but we do have our friends at Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter, or X, whatever you decide to call it, uh, joining us as well. So Carolyn is joining us there on LinkedIn. So, uh, you know, Dr. Velma, you were uh, maybe half joking earlier when we were coming on, and you said this has almost been like, uh, giving birth to another child. Talk to us about this process. What it's been like for you to now deliver the newest book in the Catch series? It wasn't the writing of the book that was challenging. It was my health this year. I, I was yeah. diagnosed with a frozen shoulder and a lot of pain in February and couldn't figure out what was causing the pain. And apparently it's a, a car accident that occurred two years prior this is what happened. I was misdiagnosed as a neck sprain, but it turned out it was in my shoulder the whole time. So I had wow. to go through physical therapy um, after they diagnosed it in July. So from February to July, I was in a lot of pain, couldn't use that side of my shoulder. So I had to rely on dictation systems, which you know are not perfect, but yeah. I had to do what I could with that. So I laughed and chuckled. I was telling the group earlier that when it got to the editor, I could tell where I was in the most and when I was in the most pain because I began breaking the rule of showing and not telling. And I started <laughs> telling rather than showing. And I had to go back and make sure I expounded on my story a little bit more. But it, it's been a joy to write this because of my conversations with the men that were involved with helping me determine how to create these characters. Yeah, we're going to uh, dive into the new book. It is out now, you guys, for only 99 cents, already an Amazon bestseller, uh, even going into today. So we definitely want to keep that going. Make sure you guys get it. It's only 99 cents, only 99 cents. So definitely take advantage of that. In fact, what Dr. Bama has done, if you guys are new to the series, she's made the uh, Kindle editions all 99 cents for the Catch mm -hmm. series. So you can get all of them for 99 cents each here on Amazon today. So we definitely invite you guys to do that. Valerie Atkinson, hello to you on the Amazon side. She says, I hope you're feeling better now, Dr. Velma, uh, as well. And then we have uh, Latonya Fleming is joining us as well. She says, congratulations to you, uh, Dr. Velma. And uh, also Dr. Todd says she's glad that you're feeling better. So let's let's do, do a very quick, because we do. you and I have not had a conversation yet. Uh, okay. about the wrong catch she'll tear uh -huh. down the house so we, we're going to dive into that yes but, but before we do that let's give our audience a quick recap as to how all this began so what i'm going to do is go in the carousel on amazon for you guys joining us on amazon i'm highlighting the first book in the series so dr bama for those who are brand new to the series how mm -hmm. did this all begin it began with one, two characters, the main character, Pastor Grayson, and his daughter, Veronica. That particular book is based on his intervention with his own daughter, someone who is a pastor of a large church who believes in promoting, preparing singles for marriage, all of that. So his his daughter was a part of that. She's a part of, uh, she has two siblings in the family. 
the other two siblings have are married, and but she isn't. But so the father's watching her pattern of dating after going to college, becoming successful in her career. She's around 32. She had hoped to be married by 30 and was upset by the fact that she hadn't accomplished that yet. So she was rushing through men trying to meet that deadline in her father. <laughs> Some kind of intervention. I see you smiling, Cyrus, because you've heard that before. Women who right. want to hurry up and rush. And so he did an intervention. And that's what that first book is about. He introduced fish characters that that uh, described the kind of men she had been dating and how dangerous that was at the time. Yeah. And I love the relationship. You and I have had several conversations, Dr. Belma. Uh, about the relationship between Grayson and, and Veronica and yeah. what that was like for her, for both of them to exhibit humility, mm -hmm. for both of them to exist, to uh, exhibit patience. Yep. And for both of them to be teachable, even yeah. though it was Grayson that was trying to help his daughter, yep. him being, being humble and teachable enough to know the way he did it was going to matter. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we saw how that was able to have, now, did you know though, and of course, I know the answer to this already, but others may not. Did you know, though, when you wrote this book <laughs> that you were beginning a brand new series? No, I did not. I thought it was writing one novel. I was excited about discovering a method that I really love that mimics Jesus's parables and how he never tried to hit anybody over the head about mm -hmm. whether or not they needed to change and that they were wrong. He always just told a story in a way that allowed them to see themselves in it. And then in the story, in, weaved in the story, a way of escape or a way to change. And he left it up to the individual at the end of the story. And so I love that method and I love doing that, but it was the readers who said, oh, I've met every one of these fish characters. I need you to write more about the fish. And from there, it 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 grew into this series. Yeah. So that leads us to the first book you introduced this year. And it's hard to believe that this book came out this year, uh, The know. Wrong Catch, which was book mm -hmm. two. Now, we see a few things in this book. So for those I'm highlighting in the carousel for you guys over on Amazon, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but I think it's pronounced um napin angel uh i think that may be right or napin angel uh says congratulations to you uh dr Bama on amazon uh and uh jacqueline says uh, man them fishes i've met them all <laughs> yeah seven women well, have said that <laughs> so the wrong catch what i love is the dynamics in this book dr Bama, is that mm -hmm. when you introduce that this year and again it's it's so much has happened in 2023, but we'll even get into that. But, I know. Um, but what I love is that we're able to see the growth in Veronica mm -hmm. and her now being able to help other women. Yeah. So I want to talk about the correlation between you and Veronica in that aspect, because you've been able to have conversations with women in different platforms, in yep. person and online. You've been able to help them navigate um, you know, some of these conversations. What has that been like for you to play the role that Grace and Veronica played in The Wrong Catch Part One? Uh, mm -hmm. What was it like for you to be able to be that person for others? Most of my career, I was a coach. I was a coach to those coming in looking for career choices and helping them to make good decisions based on what the future was for each of the jobs they were interested in. I've been coaching helping to prepare uh, new managers from those who were working in our line staff who were interested in moving up the ranks. I've been coaching those coming in for just simple help and, and support. So coaching was a part of my life. And then when I retired, I thought that was my time to move, to ride off into the sunset and just enjoy my years of having worked. I'd started with the state of California at the age of 18. So I'd worked about 35 years when I retired. So I thought I was done writing and creating and doing that until I had those conversations with my own adult daughters who began to have some concern about dating men. And so that began my journey. I, and when I realized that was what I was supposed to do, I it was God that prompted me and reminded me, there's a reason why you've been married this long. We forget that when we're blessed with something, when we've been educated in a way, whether it's your education or been blessed in your life, my personal life has been blessed. Uh, when you have a, a comp accomplished so much in your walk that it's not enough that you did it and accomplished it. It's important for you to share it with other people. 
And so that's when I realized I needed to share with other people because all the problems I started seeing sitting side by side with my husband as a pastor, you know, conducting pre-marriage sessions where people were expecting you to fix a problem that you knew would never get fixed because they were getting ready to marry the wrong person. And then conversations with single people who you knew were not ready for marriage, even though that was something they said they wanted to do in that moment. So all of those things, I knew that it was pointing towards my beginning to write. And that's why I had to do it. Yeah. Um, Let's see, Teresa says something, we have to give back to others. That that is so important, and I think yeah. I love the way that and and it's ironic that Todd says that, Doctor Bam, because that's exactly what we see Grayson and Veronica doing yeah. in yeah. the wrong catch. Mm-hmm. Um, Veronica has learned; she has benefited from yes. um, the, you know what what her father told her, and now yeah. she's able to share with others. And we've um, there's a clip that I've been posting on social media um, that really does uh, kind of help us to see how we get to this newest book. She'll tear yeah. down the house here. Mm-hmm. And that is how Grayson ends um, part one of the wrong catch. Part one uh-huh. being, of course, uh, for the women learning about the, the men. Yeah. But then, of course, he let it be known that you were going to help the men know about the women. So I want to ask about that because you you said that this all began, Dr. Velma, with conversations with your daughters. How yes. did the wrong catch, she'll tear down the house, how did that begin? That began, uh, the first two books were basically conversations I had with my brother about fish because he's an expert at fishing. So I had to lean on him in terms of the fish and their personalities and how to catch them. So that's how those characters came about. But with this particular book, I didn't want to use the fish because many of the readers, female readers have asked, please bring the fish back. We want more fish stories. And that's, that's actually the plan. So I couldn't do that. So, okay, what do I use for the women? And after after surveying the men and getting their input about the challenges, I sought to look for those things I could use, the insects, the animals, and I think I used a toy to describe these characters. And so it worked very well for the book to use them because um, when I was looking uh, and and researching animals and insects. I mean, it just jumped off the page just like it did with the fish. I mean, a black widow spider who, once she gets what she wants from the man, then she kills him. So, (laughs) you know, those are women out there that that's a real person that she wants what she wants. Who cares about you? As long as she gets that child after she's impregnated, she kills him. So that's important to know. And so it, it worked out very well. Yeah. Not so much for the one that got killed, but I, I get the point. That I... <laughs> no, not for that person. <laughs> Look, I want to say uh, the name that I was more than likely messing up. Let me know that that it's it's Maya Cook, uh, Dr. Bayama, uh, is that the one I was saying oh, uh, was Maya. under yes. Napping Angel, Angel. And thank you so much for the follow as well, Maya. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, Welcome, you all are watching Cyrus Webb Presents. I have to hurry up now because we're, Dr. Ben, we're already halfway through. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, so now we need to get dive into this. But I want to say okay. you guys are just now finding out it is pub day for Dr. Velma. Her brand new book, The Road Catch, She'll Tear Down the House, is out now. It's already an Amazon bestseller. So make sure you guys are clicking on it here on Amazon uh, if you guys are just now finding out about it, you're joining us on the other platforms, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, or Twitter, make sure you guys do go ahead and click the link you guys will see with this broadcast. That'll bring you over uh, to uh, Amazon so you can be able to get it for yourself. So, Dr. Bama, let's go ahead and dive more into the actual story. Okay. Uh, because I think the cool thing of that you've done with this book and I love this so much, is that uh, Todd says she already has hers. Uh, Carolyn says that no, that was funny. Well, hey, Carolyn, hey. Dr. <laughs> Yama says, <laughs> oh, I do have a comment from Jacqueline. Let me go back um, on the Amazon side. And again, if you guys have any questions or comments for Dr. Yama, make sure you guys put those in the chat. Uh, Jacqueline says, she is my coach now. Uh, got me in the kitchen now because I uh, ain't no cleanup woman. Welcome over here. <laughs> Uh, Valerie Atkinson says, I'm definitely going to, to buy the series. Lord knows I've had my share of the wrong catch. ESP mm-hmm. Presents says, that was quick. 
I tell you, talking with Cyrus and and, doc, and Dr. Velma go by so quick. Uh, and she says he has hers as well. Well, so let's go ahead and dive into this. So okay. I've already uh, bookmarked. So it's available on Kindle right now for 99 cents, guys. Mm-hmm. I've already bookmarked a, a, a couple things, Dr. Velma, I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. Let me go to my notes here let's so I can go. view my bookmarks. <laughs> Come on, Cyrus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, all right. So let's see what chapter this is so I can let the audience okay. know. Let me, let me uh, pull mine up too. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, that's the only thing about the Kindle is like you have to swipe through to see, what, okay, where what chapter is this? Uh, okay. It's chapter number two. Uh, chapter two is where we are. And I love this. So you have um, Grayson being able to have these real conversations with these men. And I made right. a comment um, that the, for the handout, just like we saw with the Rome catch. Uh, this is what you talk about uh, when it comes to the men. And I love this because really it goes for all of us that are people of faith. Pastor right. Grayson called the men back in session and said, it's important you remember your role as a godly example in your home. Love mm-hmm. your wife and avoid being harsh with her. Always submit as a husband and wife submit one to another in the fear of Christ. Therefore, submission is a mutual obligation for both husband and wife. So this may sound like a new concept to a lot of people, <laughs> Dr. Velma. So wow. talk to us about what Grayson is telling the men and why you felt it was important to include in the book. Because people reject this this kind of language. Just like I said earlier, when you talk about a man finding a wife, it's important for him to discover who God has put on his heart to have as his wife. And so women get in the way of that. And it's not okay. Sometimes you break a pattern for a man if you push or try to force him into something that he did not get to decide on. And so it's out of order. And so submission is a word just like um, so many other words I could talk about right now, but submission is one people get turned off about. And I think they get turned off about it, Cyrus, because they don't understand it. And yeah. you just you just spelled it out in what I've written in the book. You don't know what's required until you really love someone. Yeah. When you really love someone, then you'll know that that's nothing. That word is nothing for you in response to the love that you're getting back from that, that person. And so when you ha- don't have that, of course, that, that word bothers people or you, you, you reject it. But when you're in love and you love that person sincerely, just as Jesus did for us, he submitted to the will of the father when he gave his life on the cross. So it's not something that's uh, you must do this because this is this. No, it's a loving response because I'm getting this love back from this person. And yeah. so that's why it was important to include that in there. Uh, Todd says you lose most people when they hear the word submission. Absolutely. Well, and I think, too, speaking as a guy, I think the thing is a lot of times because of the way the world has kind of yep. misconstrued things, Dr. Velma, we think about weakness. Yeah. Uh, and no one wants to be seen as the weak man. Right. And, and probably with women, no woman wants to be seen as the weak, the, the weak individual as well. But you go on to say Grayson gives this advice as well. Mm-hmm. Also honor her. And show her understanding, yeah. practice self-control by killing the deeds of your flesh, or mm-hmm. put to death any root of temptation or sin in your heart, provide for her and your family, keep your marriage bed holy, and be always faithful only to her. Yep. And again, this is something too, I think, that is Greek to a lot of people, even though they may read English yeah. and speak English. <laughs> uh this <laughs> this type of language seems foreign. So, so forget going yeah. into the original language. Forget talking about the Hebrew definition or the Greek right. definition. That won't work. <laughs> right, some right. Of these English words are really not the, will not give you the sense of what God really means because yeah. we're stuck on the English version of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's it. And it's like, you know, when people think, I mean, again, the world has, has changed things so much. And, you know, you and I've had this conversation and I want to go too far off this because I have another part I want to share from the book, but the the world has really made, and you and I've talked about this, Dr. Velma, mm-hmm. made dating and marriage almost like a game. Yeah. And, and honestly, a lot of us are guilty of playing into that, of saying, oh, you know what? You know, that's, that's not gonna, that marriage is not gonna last, you know, or you know what? I think she should be with that person. You know, she should she should go ahead and step out with this person. That doesn't seem like the right fit for her. Or he shouldn't he should be with some. I mean, it's almost become this thing like this this arena 
where you know the 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 players are almost like you know we say no 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 this is where you should be this is where you should be what has that been like for you to kind of in these conversations Dr. Bam to really show people the seriousness of the commitment that they're looking for when it comes to marriage I call it high school dating and, and if you're mm-hmm. serious about discovering the the mate that God has for you then you're no longer in high school high school mm-hmm. dating is practicing what the dating world likes to practice It has no commitment built into it at all. And so therefore it's okay for you to go through multiple relationships and in and out of, uh, and sometimes at the same time, in and out of uh, relationships with individuals, because that's the pattern of the world's dating. And when you look at it and you study it and, and look at the history of the dating pattern we practice in the world, it's only just a couple of hundred years old. And so I'm talking about going back to the principles that are thousands of years old, that are tried and true. If we go back to discover what God has provided us, we might find some things that will really help us to be solid and become solid in our approach to uh, discovering who our mate is. And so that's what I say about it. I refer I use the word dating because that's what everybody recognizes. But it's not in scripture, scripture Mm -hmm. only. And they hate the word courtship. So we can't use that. So we use dating for marriage, dating with intent, dating with a purpose or a goal. And your only goal in meeting someone is that you're looking for the mate that you believe is the mate for you. And Mm -hmm. so therefore it changes your approach and it changes your pattern. It should change the questions you ask and it should change how much time you spend with that person. Because it doesn't take being with a person five years for them to wake up and say, oh, yeah, you are the one for me. No. Yeah. It shouldn't take that long. You all keep the comments coming. I'm loving it. On the Amazon side, we have a lot of comments coming in over there. And on the Facebook, too, uh, Dr. Taz, I'm going to get to your question for Dr. Uh, Vilma here in a second. But I, I want to ask you about a question because you and I didn't discuss this. Is the character's name Jama or Jama? The, the gentleman in your book. Is it Jama or Jama? Which, are you talking about Jamal? Oh, is it Jamal? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Jamal and Noel, right? Are you talking about, wait, which story are you referring to? <laughs> Jama, okay. Jama. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No- Noel has the father who's Ned. And remember. Um, yes. Yeah. So is that is that Jamal? Is that Jamal for oh that Oh, my one? gosh. You are really <laughs> getting deep. Let me. <laughs> Jamal, Jamal. <laughs> Jamal is with uh, the mother who's a Nork, the Nork mother. That's who Jamal is with. There's- okay. Marcus and Markel. Okay. And Netra, the Black Widow. There's Jeremy. So what did Jamal was he raised by raised by the single mother? He was raised by the single mother who's a okay. narc mother, a narcissistic mother. Got it. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that, that's who I was talking. Okay, Jamal. Okay. Well, who uh- was this? <laughs> I, I had to look on my list and say that character is not on. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, so I, I'm going to ask you about the So look, that's why I wanted, wanted to get to that. Let me get to Dr. Taz's question for you. Yes, this is a good okay. one. Uh, Dr. Okay. Velma, are people ashamed to admit that they want the submissive love you describe? Yeah, they are. I think they're uncomfortable with it as well. I think when what you don't know, you, you're uncomfortable with. And so because you don't understand it and you don't really know it, you might desire it because we're talking about it and why it's important. But you won't know that or experience that until you actually are in love with someone. And so you understand these terms are not as negative as you think they are. Because submission is both the male and the female's responsibility. We always seem to focus on that one scripture that refers to the wife submitting to her husband. And people get turned off by that. But if you read further, you'll find out there's submission on both parts. Mm -hmm. Because a man will not only stand before God based on what he's done in his life and the decisions he's done. He's also responsible for what he's done in the household and with his wife and his family. So he has to stand and give an account of a lot. And so when we understand that, that helps us to show some grace to them because of what they're carrying on their shoulders. Yeah. Such a great point. Um, Jacqueline says um, some people just jump the train because it's trending. Uh, She says, I love being married. It's such a blessing. Um, and then we have uh, ESP Presents bring up a good point. Um, they have to remember it's not a game, it's a covenant. Yep. Um, another great question from Valerie here. Um, well, she has two questions here, Dr. Velma. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to get into Jamal and, uh, and Noel. Um, did you have good guidance from your father 
or someone in your family when it came to choosing the right kid? I did not. I had a teacher, a Bible study teacher at my church. Because remember, we were taught in at 16 in 10th grade. I was the teacher was talking to us about what our plans were in terms of a husband and our future. And we had discussions around it. So we had that kind of training back then. I didn't get it from my father other than when he first met the person I was dating in the 10th grade, he said, well, what is the thing that a father should do? He said, well, what is it? What does he plan to do in his future? What's his goal after high school? What's his career choice? I mean, he went down the list of things that he was hoping he would do. And I said to my dad, I'm not trying to marry the guy. Well, that was the guy I married. I said, dad, I'm not trying to marry this guy. I'm just dating. I just met him in high school. And so at that time I was not focused on it. But we were getting the conversations, having the conversations in my Bible uh, with my Bible teacher at the church. Gotcha. And I do appreciate that. I wasn't looking for a husband at all, not in 10th grade. I had goals in mind I was trying to achieve. And so that wasn't on my heart. But through that, through research, discovering what the scriptures really said, because I sought to really uncover what I needed to know in terms of having conversations about it. And even with my own daughters, I did a deep dive then. I didn't want to shove those regular same old scriptures, uh, you know, down their throats, basically. When they asked for that conversation, I knew that I had to bring something to them that uh, was credible. So I took the time to go back through those scriptures for myself to make sure I understood what God's plan was. She also asked, uh, what does submission mean in a healthy union? That's a good question. I kind of gave the example of what Jesus did for us. The greatest example of submission to me was what how he submitted to the cross. Yeah, he asked in the Garden of Gethsemane if God could remove this, please remove it. But he recognized that that, he, that was not going to happen. So he submitted to the will of his father and gave his life so that we could have life. And for that to happen. That can only happen if you truly love them. Now, he didn't know how many would receive him, how many would accept his sacrifice at the time. He didn't know, but he did it anyway. And so a lot of times I encourage uh, couples and families at the time. Sometimes I've watched couples give up too soon because those kind of issues and challenges will come. But it's important for us to practice what we saw on the cross and show some grace, some forgiveness, some, because love forgives. Love lets it go. Love does not hold on to past hurts and experiences. Love does not keep a record, basically, of how many times your husband said he wasn't going to do and how many times you said you weren't going to do anymore. It doesn't keep a record. It forgives and, and it restores back to the place that it was in prior to whatever the incident. So submission to me is a loving response to how much love you're receiving. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to talk to you about, Dr. Velma, and then we're going to remind our audience, of course, about something special that's happening in January. Dr. Velma and I are going to be doing a deep dive uh, into the series in January. We're going to be doing uh, a, a weekly series during January. We're going to be sharing the information beginning next week. We're going to be coming here on Amazon Live, taking you guys through the books, starting with the catch that, that no one wants, uh, going through the wrong catch, and now the new book. Uh, the wrong catch, she'll tear down the house and let you guys actually be able to ask your questions for each book. So it's, it's going to be very exciting. I'm excited about that series with Dr. Velma on the series. The reason why I brought up Jamal and, and, and uh, Noel, I want to mention something, uh, Dr. Velma. And again, congratulations to you on the new release. Again, you guys have not gotten the new book. Now's the opportunity to get it for 99 cents. Um, the thing that I love is that Jamal who I felt a connection with because of the way he talked about not only <laughs> Noel, but talked uh -huh. about having conversations. He said to Grayson, we enjoyed intelligent conversations, which was a nice break for me. It is difficult to find a woman who has a grasp of the English language. Don't y'all, I didn't write this y'all. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Velma wrote this. I I'm sure just did. Reading, <laughs> I'm reading. I sure did. <laughs> okay. I, I hadn't had this level of conversation for some time. We talked about everything from our goals and to ask tough questions, which showed neither of us was on a date to waste time. Right. I love that. Right. Because then, you know, Noel even asked the questions about your relationship with God and things that mm -hmm. 
the, you know, the things that matter. Talk to us about that. What this has been like for you to show men in a different light, because we all are not the same. We all don't yeah. look for the same things. What was yeah. that like for you? Because of the stigma out there. I mean, let's just say it. A lot of women want to blame the men for everything, and they are not the blame for everything. Some of the problems and challenges of women are having is because of themselves, not because of what a man has done. There's a lot of things that a woman can do in herself. That's why I talk about self-examination, making sure you're looking at what you have to offer, making sure you're fixing those areas in your life you know you need to fix. And it's important. And then I've had conversation with um, uh, women about the fact that they're trying to make uh, the man be so emotional. Well, he's not emotional. Women are emotional, but many men aren't. My if I'm, if I'm looking for that out of my husband, that's not going to happen. He is not an emotional individual. Now, he is a provider. He is a protector. He loves me dearly. He will make sure I have everything I need. But if you're looking for an emotional response, that is not going to happen. So it's important for us to know that. So when they ask these questions of each other, they explored the characteristics of each other. They wanted to know what who is this person really? and examine the heart of each other. And that's what Jamal and Noel did. They did it right. And I think I, that was what I wanted to present in this case that so many blame the men when it's not always the men. It's a lot of times it's the women. Yeah. Yeah. And the mothers. Uh, again, everyone, yes. Dr. Vilma Beck. <laughs> and the mother. Thank you, Cyrus. In this particular case, it was the mother, narcissistic and controlling. Uh, and, and Miss Queenie, we're not talking about you. We're not talking about you. They, you know, we're not talking about you, Miss Queenie. So we we appreciate you being with us on this. <laughs> no, no. You know, let me just say this. Uh, I have a lot of family that who lent their names to these characters. So yeah. you see, Jamal is Miss Queenie's son. Miss yeah. Queenie wanted me to include her this time. She's in one of the other uh, books. I got about twenty-one family members whose names were lent to the characters in the black book. And then again, yeah. some of my sisters and were who lent their names to the characters in the purple book. I just yeah. find that's a wonderful <laughs> way to leave a legacy. No, but it is. It doesn't mean that these things describe <laughs> these people. They just lent their names for them. Right, right. But exactly. I wanted to say that the other yeah. thing that happened in Jamal's case is he he took the time to get the help from himself, having been raised by a narcissistic mother. He took the time to get the help for himself so he could break that pattern before he fell in love with Noel. So I thought that was something to say that we yeah. think that all is lost because a person has been in a situation and um, it may have affected them, but there's a way out of it too. And he took the time to make sure he worked on himself private to meeting her. Love that. Again, everyone, Dr. Velma Bagby has been our guest. As you guys can see, the new book is another page turner. The Wrong Catch, She'll Tear Down the House is out now. You can see I have mine on my Kindle there. You guys can get yours for only 99 cents, but you can get the Kindle editions of all the books in the Catch series for only 99 cents right now as well. I don't know how long that's going to last, so definitely take advantage of that. Dr. Velma, how can our audience stay connected with you? Well, first of all, since Cyrus has used up all my time, it's important for you to please... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> You always have these intense conversations. <laughs> you, I'm on all the social media platforms. It's Dr. Velma Bagby, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on threads, Twitter, uh, as well as Instagram and Facebook. Or you can reach me at drvelmabagby.com on my website. Feel free to subscribe because we're going to be doing some more giveaways uh, through those who subscribe to my uh, Facebook page. So feel free to connect with me. All right, Dr. Ram, always. I, I'm, I'm going to just overlook that comment. No. How many more seconds do I have, Cyrus? Hey, minus six. <laughs> okay. Look, always hey, a good one. Look, it is always a pleasure talking with you, my you friend. Looking forward well. to next month's conversations. We thank all of you for tuning in. And it you all continues. heard that. Y'all saw it was her. It was her, actually. <laughs> Uh, Rome, Rome knows tech. Hello to you. Good to be able to see you. Thanks for joining again. Dr. Velma Bagby has been our guest. Her new book is out now, The Wrong Cat. She'll tear down the house. Get it. Join us back here on Amazon Live in January as we go through the series, breaking it down book by book, taking your questions and comments as well. And some of you can even come on screen with us next month. 
So I would love to be able to see you guys join us for that for sure. Until next time, I'm Cyrus Webb saying thank you so much for being with us. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.